This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader of online cybersecurity education. Join more than 10,000 professionals from over 120 countries to learn security online. I am Damien from Pentester Academy TV and I want to welcome you to another episode of The Toolbox where we showcase the latest and greatest open source tools. Add them to your tool collection today. Let's take a look at Injector by Divian Shu. Hey, hey, good morning folks. Uh, this is Divyan Shu and I'll be talking and speaking about my tool Injector. We'll be discussing various uh, use cases and how exactly it is made and what all it does in this particular uh, session. So who am I? Uh, I'm currently working as a security engineer at Fred in India and uh, you can find me at this particular handle on Twitter. Pain and pain. So this is uh, one of the pain points which I have observed during my labs. So the big pain is antivirus, right? Most of the default and easy to do things gets detected by AV. So we want something that, that supports uh, payload execution in memory and in default has a good antivirus bypass code. Other than this, a uh, couple of other pain points as well which we have is PowerShell in CLM mode. This kind of restricts uh, most of the uh, tool sets we have. Next restriction which we have is app locker restriction, which kind of uh, restricts the execution of .NET binaries itself. So in that case, you can use uh, PowerShell reflection, uh, reflective uh, loading of the .NET library in the memory, and kind of bypass this to get get the injector executed. The, the main reason for me making this is right, like I wanted a single stop for payload execution. I don't want to sit and prepare my custom code for each and every each and every you know target. So this was the reason why I, I kind of uh, went ahead and built this so that I just have a single stop for everything. Injector. So what exactly this is? This is a tool written in C hash to ease pain points and by pain points I don't exactly mean that it is difficult to bypass AV. It's easy but it's just that it has a it has additional efforts required from our end which I wanted to minimize. So PowerShell script is also available on the GitHub page for reflective loading in case you know the .NET is restricted because of app locker and it is available at this particular GitHub. Injectors. Let's inject. So this is will this will be uh, covering you know what exactly it does and what are the modules which are present in the tool. So basically, it supports in-memory execution. It bypasses majority of antivirus vendors. Again, this does not mean that it will be bypassing all the antivirus vendors. In fact, it does not. The main point of creating this is not to bypass AV. It is to ease the pain points. That is, I should just do very less coding and get uh, and pop shells more easily. So it supports solutions to some common pain points without writing custom code. Now it has various uh, modules, right? So it has a couple of modules and the first one is process injection. Then you have DLL injection, then you have process hollowing, then you have a CLM bypass for PowerShell. So these modules will be kind of having a demo on how these exactly work. Next we have uh, support for encrypted shellcodes as well. In case your shellcode gets detected by a defender or something, you can just encrypt it using the custom encryption which we have. Not custom encryption, by custom encryption I don't mean we are inventing some encryption algorithm, no. We are just using a wrapper around the existing AES or XOR encryption so that it's easy for us to just encrypt the shellcode as well. By default injection, what happens is it will default be inject into notepad.txt if present. If it is not present, it will be creating this new process for injection. Process injection. So Process injection is actually injecting into remote process. So again, as discussed previously, uh, we'll be injecting into notepad.exe if it is present. If not, we'll create an inject. So there are a couple of points. Shellcode which is used for this particular module, that is process injection, can be remote as well as local or on any SMB server as well. Next, we have two supports for this particular thing, right? Like you can either use custom, you know, uh, old ones, uh, old Win APIs, which are generally being used for this process injection, virtual log, write process memory, or you can use some rare Win APIs, which are uh, which deals with section memory. So this is how it is being done. Uh, the injector will first allocate some memory, some memory into notepad.exe process, copy our shell code, and then 
create a new uh, new thread and execute that shell code in the new thread next we have dll injection so dll injection will again have be happening into newfed.exe that is for by default for every injection so dll like shell code can be remote or on disk it doesn't matter there is a twist over here because it will be saving the dll on disk so in case you are using a simple interpreter dll it will be getting flagged and deleted so this kind of won't work if you use a, a pre-built DLL which is uh, which you can get from Metaprinter. It's better to create your own custom DLL and use this. So how this works is, we'll be basically loading DL, uh, DLL into remote process which is notepad.exe. So how we are going to do an injector is basically we'll be writing the DLL location into this uh, into some address which we uh, allocate inside notepad.exe and then creating a new thread and loading that DLL into that particular process via that thread using load library uh, win API. Next, we have PowerShell uh, CLN bypass, right? So what we have done over here is we'll be creating our custom run space. We'll be looping over the user input. Whatever he types, we'll execute that in this uh, that in the custom run space uh, created by injector. We'll type the output onto a temporary file and then we'll read again. Uh, then we'll be again reading from that particular file to display the output as uh, injector's output. So this is how it is being done. And uh, again, this is a in, uh, this is a infinite loop, which kind of gives you a feel of having a proper shell. You can exit it anytime. There are few uh, few ways to exit it, which I'll uh, show you in the demo. Lastly, we have process hauling. So process hauling is, act, uh, is actually done by starting SVC host in a suspended state. Once that is started, we read PEB for offsets and kind of do some offset arithmetic. Once that is done, we'll overwrite that particular address with our shell code. Once the overwriting is done, we'll continue the execution of SVC host so that the moment execution happens, our shell code is executed in name of SVC host.exe. So basically in process explorer, our process won't be coming, it would be coming as uh, SVC host, but, uh, but in reality, the shellcode will be executing inside that process. So we are kind of masking our own process behind SVC host. So now we'll have a small demo of how Injector exactly works. So this is my, uh, this is my uh, terminal. So this is where injector is currently saved. As you can see, we have a couple of modules. So we'll try each of them. So before we start, let us try with the first one. So first one is a process injection. And for this, we'll be needing a shell code. So let us create a shell code using very basic uh, interpreter uh, shell code. Yeah. So this is the uh, this is the way I'll be creating the shell code. This particular IP is my IP uh, on which I'll be starting the listener. And once the shell code creation is done, we'll execute it via injector. And once this is done, we'll be starting a Python server for injector to fetch the shell code. Now we'll go back to the injector and execute it. We'll specify the mode as one because that is the process injection mode. We'll specify that uh, we are using shell code. Next, we are gonna specify the location. So location is my web server, right? So I'll just specify the location. Once this is done, what will happen is it will create a notepad.exe. If there is no process like that, else it will inject into the existing notepad.exe. We just need to press enter. Uh, as you can see, notepad.exe was spawned because there was no previous process like that. And let us check back to our uh, terminal to see if we got a sh uh, shell. As you can see, we have a get request on this shell code. That means it actually fetched the shell code from this server. And now we have a working shell as well. So this was not detected by Defender. This means that this kind of bypassed the basic Windows defense. Now we'll try an, another uh, module as well. So this is going to be again using the same shell code which we have. We'll host it on a server. 
and then let us try with uh, process volume it's again the same thing we just need to change the mode uh, in this case m3 specifies the process following so we'll specify 3 and when that once that is done we'll just press enter we'll wait and the process following is done we'll check again for our shell yeah as you can see again there was a get request made and this is again a new shell which we got so this is how it is being done so just to uh, one more uh, observation I would like to share is in default cases we are not switching off defender it is currently in a working state yeah this is the real time protection is switched on for defender while we are doing this demo. next thing uh, I would like to share is the powershell uh, CLM bypass which we have so you need to specify the mode as 5 because that is the mode for the powershell CLM and then we need to give it a temp file because we will be writing and reading from the file, right? So we'll just specify some random file. Once this is done, any command we execute on this particular terminal will be executed in a custom run space, and from that it will be reading, uh, it will be reading the output saved in this file and showing you. This is how it is currently working. So even if you have a CLM uh, CLM enabled, we can actually bypass this. Next, we can try for a new kind of uh, support which we have is encryption support, right? So now suppose a hypothetical case, the shell code is being detected by some AV vendor, and we want to avoid that. So what you can do is, just a moment, you can encrypt the shell code so what you'll do is you'll specify the location of shell code which in our case is the server then we will say how we want to encrypt the shell code which in our case will be AES then we'll specify the password uh, which will be just a password and then we'll save this file on the disk you will see that it won't be triggering antivirus because again it is encrypted Now it is being encrypted by AES and written on the disk, right? So we'll again perform the same thing, but via using this encrypted shell code. So injector. So we'll use the first module. Uh, we'll specify shell code. Then we'll specify we need to decrypt via AES because that is the encryption we use. Then we'll specify the password, which was password. And then we are going to specify the location, which is the disk. Before we, uh, we we execute this, I'll just share the screen of my terminal. And we already have a shell, we'll exit this. There is no need for uh, this particular web server because we'll be reading from the disk. But just in case, I'll be showing you that there should be no HTTP calling. So once that is done, we'll again execute the payload and this seems good. Yeah, so again, notepad.exe was created and we'll be having a look at the terminal once more. And as you can see, there was no uh, HTTP call made because it was reading from the disk and you have a working shell. So in this case, what actually happened is we saved the MSF Venom shell code, but encrypted it via AES and then executed that right in memory. So Defender was not able to detect that. So this is this is all I had for this injector demo. You can use the encryption for other uh, other modules as well. Whatever, wherever you are using uh, shell code, you can use the encryption. So yeah, that is all. Thank you. Thank you, Divyanshu, for your presentations and the demo earlier on. Uh, thank you so much for the whole presentation of all the different modules in that that injector can. Um, can be do can be done you know um you know is there any expect in injector that you any new modules that you are thinking of building out in the next six months or a year oh there are definitely many aspects that can be added to the tool 
There are literally so many interesting techniques which are being used by malware to persist the move laterally, and we can add some of the techniques to injector as well. One more point is injector does not by exactly bypass all antivirus vendor, and hence there is a a bit of scope and improvement improving that as well. Other than this, there has been a very interesting project which I just recently saw is D Invoke, which was recently presented. So that can be as well used and integrated with this so that we move away from P Invoke and dynamically the syscalls are being used. <laughs> yeah, I think that is something that uh, we have also uh, presented uh, earlier on in some of our yeah. um, in the toolbox series. Um, you know, is there like any interesting uh, element that you would like the co- community to contribute into your project? So yeah, like uh, obviously the D invoke thing is very interesting, and we can invoke that and completely remove the P invoke section. That is something that can be done. Other than that, I'm currently exploring other techniques like phantom DLL injection and all those kind of things. So we can explore any such techniques as well. There will be many things out there which I do not know or the community knows. So in that cases, we can include them as well to have a broader sense for injector. Okay, thank you for you know attending this Q and A session and uh, coming on board to the toolbox for presenting your tool. You know, uh, you I think what you have done uh, can really inspire a lot of people. You know, uh, to explore more, to work with you more. In the near future, uh, and I do hope that the community can reach out to you to build uh, more stuff on Injector and uh, make it more wholesome and more exciting <laughs> to hear yeah, about it. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time uh, coming on board to the toolbox, and we do hope to see another tools from you in the future. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, Divanshu, once again for coming on board to this episode of the toolbox. For more information of this tool, do see our description box below. Subscribe to our channel and stay tuned to the next episode of the Toolbox.